the next three to five years are not gonna look like the last. Um, so let's take a look at a few milestones over the last 10 or 15 years. I'm, first, I'm sure you'll agree that the last two years in technology has been like nothing else we've ever seen. It's accelerating faster and faster. Yet, ironically, even though we didn't predict the last two, or we couldn't expect the last two years, many predictions have planned AI and predicted AI to be on the scene almost to the year. In 2016, at this event, we had Ray Kurzweil speak, and he discussed his 2006 book, The Singularity is Near, where he wrote that AI will be as smart as a human, as in reasoning, decision-making, music, stories, art, also called artificial general intelligence by 2029, and that's just five years from now. He also wrote that humans will have the capabilities to merge with AI, at which point we lack the, the capability and understanding to predict what comes next. That's what he calls the singularity. That's 20 years away. And I remember when I read that book, The Singularity is Near, how far-fetched all this seemed. He, he talked about in, 20, in the early 2020s, we're gonna be having interesting conversations with AI. Most experts said that's 50 years away, if ever. We're here right now. In 2011, the world woke up to Watson. Okay, Watson AI, they won the television game show Jeopardy. So that, that put AI back in the public consciousness after many years of this so-called AI winter. That was followed the next year in 2012 when Alex Hinton, uh, I'm sorry, with Jeffrey Hinton, created a, a neural network called AlexNet. And AlexNet was a deep learning technology that vastly improved image recognition for computers. It still wasn't very good, but it marked a significant development and it opened up new possibilities for AI by the researchers. And then the, the next year, in 2014, Sam Altman and Elon Musk and others co-founded OpenAI, and they had the mission to ensure that artificial general intelligence, when it came, would benefit all of humanity. But it wasn't long before a, OpenAI realized the value they had. They began raising more money and investing heavily until ChatGPT 3.5 was released in late 2022 and awakened the world to the power of AI. <clears throat> this has continued to advance at a mind-blowing pace. And when GPT-4 was released last year, last spring, it introduced a model size of over a trillion parameters, which was 400% larger than GPT-3. Investment is continuing to accelerate. AI compute power is doubling every three to four months now which is much faster than Moore's Law. To understand this, it, it's very difficult to understand this. Dr. Al Albert Bartlett was a professor at University of Colorado, and he was a physicist who is known for his work in exponential uh, technologies, the mathematics of human population growth and the implications of exponential growth in areas like market expansion and technology advancement. But he pointed out famously, that our brains evolved to think linearly, um, where things grow steadily and predictably. He noted that while we have the ability to create exponential technologies, we lack the ability to innately understand the impact of exponential technologies. And this lack of understanding can hinder our ability to make good decisions. We can lose opportunities, miss out on opportunities, but it could also lead to tragic consequences when you get into areas like uh, synthetic biology and healthcare and technology. And that's why we're here today, to make sense of it all and begin to better answer the questions, how do we respond to this? How do we respond to this exponential growth in technology when it, it's very hard to predict the next three years? It doesn't look like the last three years. What should we be doing in our businesses? How should we be positioning our organizations for this type of growth and change? So the conversations that we have over the next two days and then the conversations you have with each other, we hope you'll come away with us better prepared to, to begin the planning within your organization. So you're in the right place to begin answering those questions. So here's the reality. The decisions that you and your company make over the next two years will determine whether the company dominates or dies in the next 10. And that's not overly dramatic. Some of the, some of the greatest minds in tech and innovation and business and finance all agree with that sentiment. 
This is going to be the most disruptive time of anybody's lifetime. These challenges, though, they're not just affecting technology and business plans. They're, they're affecting geopolitics, supply chains, energy demand, workforce transformation. They're funding entirely new business models that are coming out of Silicon Valley and Utah and Texas and other places all over the world. And all of these things we're gonna be talking about in the next two days.